what's your ultimate goal here? My original reason I got into all this was a global poverty focus. So I still am very oriented towards that type of outlook. Um, but now with a more local lens, of what can we do to increase our local food production? What can people grow in their own yards? Uh, you know, there's so many things out there from around the world that we're just not utilizing properly. So all that combined. Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. It is late, I just got back and I did some amazing videos. I was in Central Florida, which is like two and a half hours from my house and we just got back. It's late as you can tell. And the last stop was an amazing place called Cody Cove Farm. This video is gonna blow you away. This place is gonna blow you away. One of the most beautiful places I've, I've been to and what Josh is growing there is amazing. So I definitely didn't want to wait. I wanted to get this video out because uh, it is so great. And uh, I'm going to put uh, Josh's contact information below. If you get a chance, contact him. I uploaded a video the other day with John, who's 91 years old, growing mangoes. And he's a couple of houses away from Josh. Well, this is Cody Cove Farm. And this is the video with Josh. You've all been waiting for it. Josh is well known in the community where people are trying to grow their own food, live sustainably, and just teaching others to do the same. So thank you, Josh, so much for this video. Everybody, please like and subscribe and share this video with others, and here it goes. All right, everybody, here we are at Cody Cove Farms, and this is Josh. Uh, Josh, thanks for having us come on out and uh, film your place. Sure thing. So uh, tell us, uh, how many, uh, how big is your property? Uh, well, it was five, about five acres, and we've just recently expanded into kind of a sister farm. So it's about seven acres with everything now. Okay, so your here is, what would you call this Central Florida? We are Central Florida, both up and down and side to side. We're, if you put a big, you know, crosshairs over Florida, we're right in the middle. Right in the middle. And what is the, the climate zone here, the growing zone? So um, this is a zone nine situation. Um, most of this area can expect very severe freezes is low. I mean, I, I've recorded myself plenty of times hitting 20 degrees, but this particular property due to its proximity, it's, we're on the Southeast side of the lake and the slope is, is really a zone 10 situation. So in this neighborhood, we have dozens or hundreds of large old mangoes, lychees, there's fruiting jackfruit, there's all kinds of, uh, there's wow. royal poinsettias, there's tropical species in this neighborhood. Any coconuts? Just mine. Oh, you have coconuts. Wow. They're, they're yep. young. Right over your shoulder, there's a, a mango tree that you said might be hundreds of years old or, I, or maybe. Or... Some of the older people in the neighborhood say some of these mangoes were here when they were kids. So wow. they, they could be 70, 80, 100 years old. And jackfruit here, they're growing. My neighbor's got fruiting jackfruit. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a so. You, you mentioned a lake. What lake are we near? We're on Crooked Lake, which is a uh, I think it's six thousand acres or so, and it's shaped like this, which is why it's called Crooked Lake. And we're kind of in the crook on the southeast side, which is the best for a warm microclimate. Now, I was driving out here, and there's like literally nothing around on the way here. Right. Is this like a hidden gem, or is this like a, a, a low class neighbor? What is this considered? Um, it is a hidden gem. Because, you know, the, the, uh, the cold, like even one mile that way, they could expect really hard freezes. But it's not the only spot like this. There's actually quite a bit of lakes around here with sloped land on the south side. And you do notice when you drive through this area, you start seeing mangoes and plumerias and tropical things. And, oh, I'm on the south side of a lake. So there are other places like this, but this is a, a unique little gem. Now, is, is land here a lot like everywhere else, or is it pretty much a hidden um, area that's not much? Probably, f coming from where you're from, it would be considered cheap. Really? But uh, there is land around here that would probably be pretty good for this type of farming that's probably considered relatively cheap from people coming from the coast. So, so if somebody wanted to get land here and grow tropical fruit trees, yeah, uh, this is a place to be? <laughs> Babson Park, Frostproof, which is right over there. It, the name is actually pretty true. There's a lot of very protected spots there. Um, even the other day, I was up 30 minutes north of here in Haines City in a big slope and just huge mangoes all over. So really, if you can find a place near a lake and a slope is, is really huge. This property drops about 130 feet, which is very unusual for Florida. Well, yeah, everyone says Florida is completely flat, but I guess not. This is the uh, highest point until Cuba, is this hill. Wow, wow. 
All right. So you're not only growing uh, some fruit trees here. You have a bunch of uh, greens here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we, we are planting fruit, but my focus since I've been a grower, which is since I started in 2010 and really in 2012, it became my career. Um, I've really focused a lot on unusual tropical vegetables, perennial vegetables, uh, root, tropical root crops, um, a lot of those types of things, bamboo. Um, but also now I, I do a lot of fruit too. So, so is there a local farmer's market that you sell your stuff or is it just for your own use? We, so we primarily sell plants, plant material and seed. Um, and now once the fruit starts to really come in, uh, we'll, we'll sell fruit. We sell some fruit now. Um, but we primarily ship that actually. Um, we ship, we have a mail order business and we ship small plants, we ship cuttings, we ship seeds. Uh, but we also do in-person, uh, we do tours with the nursery open, we do rare fruit sales, we do uh, a lot of different things, wherever we can. And you have a website? CodyCoFarm.com. CodyCoFarm, farms or farm? Uh, farm. Farm.com, I'll put the link below. Sure. Uh, so just show us around because I'm interested in everything you got here, yeah. but we don't have time to see five acres, but we certainly have time yeah. to see your highlights. Yeah, so this is our nursery. Uh, right now, we're just about to get a full-time nursery manager. I currently do most of the work here, the landscape management, all the planting, the shipping, and the nursery. But um, we are have somebody coming here to be full-time in the nursery soon. So right now, a lot of this is actually getting planted here. Some of it's for sale. It's a big hodgepodge. Um, but this is our greenhouse. We have all kinds of species of fruits, perennial vegetables, all, all different things. Another thing we do is wholesale orders. So edible landscape companies and stuff, we've got a big wholesale order right here. We can propagate a lot of these lesser known edible species to, to order in bulk. Wow, you got a lot of rain here or just average in Florida? Uh, it must be one of the driest places in the state because it's wow. the surrounding native landscape is, looks a lot like a desert. Wow. Um, seems like the storms tend to split over this hill too. And the soil is very droughty and we're up 100 feet above the water table, so. So how do you water your stuff with a well? I'm on a well, yep. How many feet down deep is it? 600. Wow, 600, wow. Like where I live in West Palm, I can go down 18 feet and hit water. Where I used to be, sometimes the water table could come up to the ground level. Wow. So, this is so no flooding up here? No, it could rain and for 100 years, I think, and we'll be up above water. Wow. Yep. All right, that's uh, amazing. So uh, yeah, show us okay. around. So when you moved here, what was here when you moved here? Was it just uh, just wild it, plants? Wild no... plants, so there wasn't a farm or anything here. Right. Did you so, have to remove a lot of trees when you moved here, or they were pretty much? Yeah. So you'll see um, a lot of the farm is kind of a an agroforestry with mixed, you know, pre-existing trees left for some canopy. So I heavily cleared, I don't know, maybe an acre through here um, by hand, and I've utilize the trees strategically and left certain ones and things and we're growing underneath of that. Okay. Uh, but everything else you see has been planted in the last two and a half years, just about. Okay. So, so with all this growing you're doing the, the greens and also the fruits, how's the wildlife out here? Because we are in secluded. I mean, is there... It's tough. Uh, rabbits are a struggle on a lot of things and raccoons and possums really do a number on the fruit. So it is okay. what it is. Okay. So this is the entry to the farm here. Um, part of our goal is to identify new things that do well in this in Florida. You know, there's so many people that do fruit, but we're trying to, uh, yes, collect fruit, but move beyond that into lesser known because it, you know, we we need more food than fruit. So we have lots of uh, interesting tropical vegetables you know we're much more like africa southeast asia latin america here than we are the rest of the country so um, when you come in here you know there's kind of a mix of all kinds of different things which i'm glad to point out some of these and then uh then it opens up into the farm sure yeah so one example here would be uh this is katuk which is a, a tropical leafy green so for the hottest six months of the year this is uh, available when all the cold season vegetables really go away. 
And this is a really nutritious green that you can cook or eat raw and you just can strip these off and you don't even have to cut them up, which we like. Yeah, I have that and it grows great near us and it's a wonderful high protein food yeah. source. It's this excellent. is another one. Uh, this one to me is very underexploited and I'm trying to really propagate and promote this. Um, this one's called Haitian Basket Vine and it grows in, we're in 100% shade here. You could set up a hammock and relax. That's where this can do really well. And it's kind of like a bougainvillea. You get these big shoots. So you take this, take the leaves off, boil for a few minutes, dump the water, and it's like the most tender, delicious spinach. Really? Can't eat it raw? No. The Haitian people I've talked to, they say, got to boil and dump. Got it. Um, it's, it's honestly, there's very little even written about this species because it's mostly only known in Haiti. But uh, definitely a cool one. Why are you growing bananas here? Oh, yeah. We have probably 25 kinds of bananas. Wow. that's. I'm really trying to cool. evaluate, you know, which ones are best adapted here. Um, we did take a pretty direct hit from that hurricane, so we had really bad loss on papayas and bananas, but most of the bananas are back by now. So. Uh, this one is chaya, which is another leafy green. This is a uh, cooked leafy green. In, in certain parts of Central America where the Maya were historically, this is a very important native vegetable. So it lives for 25 years. You just put a stick in the ground, and this is a cooked leafy green. And again, this is available in the hottest six months of the year. Um, we eat quite a lot of this. Now, yeah. what happens when it's not hot? Does the tree die back? Or does it not just grow well? Um, it defoliates. It gets all unhappy, but it survives. And it can actually return from the ground after a 20-degree freeze. But it, you know, when, it, when the cabbages and stuff are really happy, this is not so happy. So it's kind of, with all these tropical greens, you kind of get six, eight months of the tropical greens, six, eight months of the cold season greens, kind of back and forth. Have you like boil that for like five minutes or something? Uh, you don't need to boil it, um, but it needs to be cooked with high heat for five to 10 minutes. So if you're not boiling, what would you consider high, how, how uh, high heat? Stir fry, slice it up and put it in a lasagna, throw it in a soup. Got you. you don't need to discard the water though. Got you. So When you say don't need to discard the water, what do you mean? You could you, Well, you don't need to boil it and discard the water like some greens. Got you, got this you, got just you. needs to get hot because the compound that's in here that you don't want to eat raw uh, goes out into the air, so it, it's not in the in the water anymore. Okay. So. These are all, uh, the, our, our winter garden is kind of fading here and I'm replacing, and this is a bit of a mess right now, but we grow vegetable seed in here and trial things. Uh, now, how hot does it get here in the summer? Just like everywhere else? Yeah, yeah, Okay. it's very hot, but we do get kind of a prevailing breeze that I think is probably going to be really beneficial for a lot of the mangoes. So uh, this is cool. This is a, a very common plant, um, fishtail palm. But a lot of people don't know this is a great vegetable. Uh, in, in northern Thailand, the heart of palm of this is a, quite an important vegetable that I got to try. And uh, it's good. So it's the leaves or it's the heart of palm? The heart of palm. Okay. Yeah. And it's multi stem so if you harvest one, it doesn't kill it. I just, you, know, you just get this at Lowe's, which is kind of nice. I have a Cecropia. You've had this? Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. That's amazing that it grows here. Yeah, it does. Good. I'll show everybody what it looks like here. Yeah, so you eat a... Uh, these are just Worm about food. right. <laughs> yeah, so it's... Gummy. Yes, everybody, you eat that. That's a fruit. <laughs> it actually... Yeah, filled with juice. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. How old is this tree? Less than two and a half years. Wow. Oh, very cool. There's a be careful there's a little fire ant on here. Yeah, it snapped in half in the hurricane. So if it, if that hadn't happened, it'd be huge. Where's the ant? I can't see it. Oops. <laughs> I think you're okay. Good. Okay. Crazy fruit. Oh, there's the ant. <laughs> Kind of an inconvenient fruit tree because you have to pick it just right, and it's so tall that you know if, yeah. if the thing gets any height, you're not going to ever get to eat the yeah. fruit, and they splat. So. so these are two uh, very well adapted bananas. 
with bananas, it's critical in this part of the state to choose ones that have some tolerance to cold. They're all cold sensitive, like their leaves, but some of them, the stems are very hardy. And some of them, these varieties, if there's no frost, exposure to low 30s is not damaging to them. Where some of the more tropical types of bananas, they really decline even if they get into the 30s and 40s. So this is dwarf Namwa, and this is uh, SH3640. This is a very lesser known variety that is maybe the most productive thing that can be grown in Florida. We consistently get bunches off of these 50, 60 pounds. We had one that was 80 wow. pounds. How do they taste? They're kind of like a grocery store banana, but with a little more acidity. Okay. I mean, I give them to customers are like, man, we got to get more of those. They, people like them. Are they dwarf size too? It's not a dwarf, but it's not very tall. When the fruit is hanging, it, it's here. Um, it's not quite as short as some of these other dwarfs, but it, it's a compact type plant. These don't look that good to me right now because I overdug pups, which I sell, and I, uh, they got beat up real bad in the hurricane. But they're coming back. They're starting to actually look pretty decent now. Um, these are carambolas, which are one of the few fruits that actually do pretty well in this amount of shade. So, kind of Wow, that's amazing. Now, did you know these will grow here when you moved here, or did you were just experimenting? Um, I was actually able to grow star fruit pretty well even in the freeze zone over there. Okay. They, uh, they come back so quick from cold. They're one of the tropical fruits that you can grow in a solid zone 9 place where there's hard freezes. And even better because they can go in shade where it's a little more cold protected. We would get a lot of star fruit over there, even with getting pretty good freezes pretty often. Um, Want to see some big passion fruits? Sure. Well, this is a fun, this is a... An, an edible fig relative, Ficus auriculata. Haven't tasted it yet, but is it a fruit? It produces an edible fruit. Yeah. What does it look like or called? Mm, well, the common name is probably only in Vietnamese or something. But it, okay. it's a big. It's a it's a ficus, and this is a special type of it that will produce a fruit without its pollinate pollinator. Wow. Uh, it hasn't fruited yet. Now, this is a. Uh, Sweetheart, another one from the same breeding program as the, not a huge bunch on that. It's okay. Not bad. Yeah. This uh, citrus tree seems sure to like it in this shady environment. Wow, you're about to grow citrus here too. I'm thinking about planting some more of these sugar bells in the shade. Uh -huh. Okay, so yeah, we're looking at more of these big passion fruits here. These are, you see they really load up when you do the hand pollination. And you so can, they're not self-pollinating. Right, so uh, you need two seedlings. We grow all these from seed and you get fruit in your first year. And uh, you, when you hand pollinate, you just go real quick and you have to mix up the pollen between the two, at least two plants. So put it on a fence line and you just walk around and do them. And they're very tart, you were saying? Very tart, um, really like, kind of like lemon of passion fruit where it's good for desserts, sweet drinks, drizzling over other sweet things, you know what I mean? And you can feel the weight on it. They're nice wow. and filled out because of uh, the hand pollination. Yeah. We've and, had, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, we've had half a cup of pure juice out of one fruit. Wow. It yeah. must be great with like miracle fruit. Yes. Yeah. I would think so. I, my miracle fruit's not fruiting right now to try that. Well, it will grow out here, miracle fruit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My neighbor's got a, quite an old one. Uh -huh. Yeah. So these are the jackfruits. We've, uh, we're planting some grafted, but these are all seedlings actually of different strains. Um, seems to be a debate with some people thinking, the guy who lives here actually used to be involved in commercial jackfruit in Belize, and he's very heavily like seedling liking. And then some people know, you know, I don't know. So I'm doing both. Is that um, with just jackfruits or with everything? Just just jackfruit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so these are different seedling lines, you know, uh, J29 and some other ones. I, I did get my first bloom. These came out of one gallons or three gallons two and a half years ago, and they're just starting to get some bloom. And you have grafted as well? Just a few. Uh, rabbit girdled some of my nicer ones down the hill. I've got a cochin I'm about to put out. 
I might slowly venture into more, but I planted these probably too close. Um, and I will just plan to just cut out any I, I don't like, you know, I've got a lot of space. I'm kind of going the whole north side of the farm with the big row of jackfruit. Nice. So, nice. yeah. So other than jackfruit, uh, what, what won't grow here? Will my may grow here? So we do, we are planting uh, Viejo Mame. So we think that that's going to be the best um, one for pushing into more marginal places like this. Dr. Steve Brady, who's a fruit expert from Southwest Florida, he looked at Viejo Mame under a glass and determined based on the flowers that it's a different species than of, of Puteria. It's something related to Mame that's not Mame. And uh, what's unique about it is all the reports say it's more cold tolerant. And also the fruit comes off the plant in December. So it's only on there from March to December. The problem with Mame is it typically hangs through the winter. And even if it's not that cold, the fruit gets damaged. We have the, would have the same problem here with Caimito fruit. So, uh, but this, this Viejo seems to, uh, you know, for that reason, it's good. And, you know, we were about 32 here and our two specimens had no damage, even young. It, the leaves that were on there that night are still good. Uh, whereas just right here, I had coffee trees killed to the ground. So um, it's, it's at least that cold tolerant. And I'm also planting uh, one or two green sapotes. It might be. Oh, wow. So what about persimmons? How would they do in this environment? They're good. There's good persimmons all around here. We're a little far south for really good persimmon, but some of the better selections can be good here. So how many chill hours would you say again? It's an interesting environment where you can grow jackfruit and peaches in this place. Yeah. I don't know how many chill hours, probably over a hundred, I would think. Um, but that that's actually good even for some of the tropical species to get good bloom induction, like lychee, sure. longan, and even some of the Indian and Pakistani mangoes apparently can be can benefit, you know, for their bloom. Um, so I seem to get so much colder here than down south, but still not chill uh, or freezing often. How are the diseases here? Like, do you have the lychee mite here? We do have the lychee mite. In general, though, our disease pressure is way lower for a few reasons. One is that we're just far enough away from all the host stuff that a lot of the bad stuff we don't have. And secondly, there because of the lake and the slope, there's really good air movement. So in less humidity, I think, than the really muggy parts of like, you know, Miami. So. Uh, pretty good for that regard. Sure. What about avocado? How does that do here? Avocado is great here. I'm planting a collection of avocado, trying to have it every day of the year. Um, it's a bit of a tough go. I need to start over. I'm grafting more and trying to trying to get avocado really going. Really cool. Yeah. All right. So what else do you got? Okay. So this area in here is kind of rainforest themed. This was all jungle that I kind of thinned and left some canopy of palms and stuff. And I run overhead and there's all kinds of tropical species in here. You have to come through this passion fruit maze here. Uh, this is like acai, but more cold tolerant. Uh, it's the, they farm this in Southern Brazil for acai, but it, it's a different species, but takes the cold of this area. Uh, Malanga. This is Naranjia, which is like a South American uh, tomato relative that's a fruit. Um, and this is tree tomato. This is an uncommon fruit to see in Florida because it needs to be grafted to a uh, different species to tolerate nematodes. So uh, I'm probably not going to see another one of these anytime soon. They're not, not very common to see. And but, it tastes like tomatoes. Um, it doesn't taste a little bit. It's not my favorite, to be honest, or at least this one's not my favorite. Uh, but in South America, it's very appreciated. And you were saying your neighbor grows stuff here too. Uh, how well do you know him? Uh, yeah, we're, we're great friends with them. So do you get the properties at the same time? Pretty much. They were here a little earlier, but um, yeah, pretty much. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. So in here, we've also got different types of bananas. This is a local selection. Well, here's canistel you have. Canistels, right? yeah, I'm planting those through here. They seem to do okay here. Uh, well, uh, well, one comment is the Roth Sapote was much more cold sensitive. So I'm probably gonna get rid of these. It's similar enough to canistel that I don't wanna have just a more cold sensitive 
canistel. So probably not going to be one for the long haul here. Um, You're saying you got these bananas here? Yeah, this is a local selection. Uh, somebody told me there's this great banana in the forest, and I went out and got it from a guy's house. And I think it's a type of namwa, but this has been very productive here. 50, 60 pound bunches for us in this one. Very to uh, cold tolerant and good one. And they don't, they're very tall, but they don't need to be propped. They hold the fruit weight without leaning over, which is, which is nice. This is a very special tree. This is the sycamore tree from the Bible, Ficus sycamorus. And uh, this is actually the special fruiting type from Israel called Shikma Boami. So it makes a fig right on the trunk. Really? And, uh, yeah, I, I've only tasted one unripe one, but it tasted just like an unripe, you know, uh, ground turkey fig or whatever. Wow. So we'll see. This could be like a tropical fig alternative for South Florida. Really neat tree. And also Ficus sycamorus is a good rootstock for normal figs. I have the rootstock type right here. Um, this is a different clone of that species. This one is great. You graft figs to it and you get, there's specimens in Florida, big old healthy fig trees using this as a rootstock. Wow. So you can grow a good variety of figs out here? I am in fig experimentation mode. Okay. I'm getting germplasm and trying to get it all grafted and it's another one of these 10 year projects. But uh, yeah, I'll show you my, what, you know, what I've got going. This is, um, Maha Chinook. Wow, look at that, everybody. These mangoes are growing here. And remember, we're about two hours northwest of West Palm Beach. So typically, you wouldn't see thriving mangoes. But here, they seem to be doing well. Maha Chinook, and we're in mango season right now, too. Yep. Just waiting for my first one here. They're not quite there. So I've been eating mangoes from my neighbors big time. All right, here we have Jamaican strawberry. That's a tall one. Yeah. Coconut's another one. We've got some work to do on the zone pushing. This is Malay Dwarf, and it did get a little dinged up in the cold the last two winters. Now we're trying to get Atlantic Tall and Panama Tall, which the reports are those are the most cold tolerant available stuff. So, I don't know. This might, this might do it. It might slowly just death by a thousand cuts every winter kind of go away. I am trying, though. Uh, just 30 minutes south of here there's huge coconuts so this is a really cool rare fruit tree that i've never really seen many people talk about or grow if you've heard of governor's plum it's a yeah. relative of governor's plum but i i figured out it's more cold tolerant because i had a half and half graft out there and it ha the governor plum froze this didn't it has no thorns it's self-fertile and the fruit's not astringent so you could just so it's like see them in there it uh, tastes like a plum, and uh, it's a really beautiful... What's the name of it? Uh, Rukum. 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 There's a specimen of this at the Fruit and Spice Park. It's beautiful, like a jabota kava. It's, it's a fun little, you know, grab and snack type of fruit tree. There's some more um, All right. Yeah, more, more of that. Um, this is kind of a tropical... Planting. We've got uh, all kinds of bananas in here. Several species of ice cream bean. Um, these are abiyus. Oh wow, you grow abiyus here. Well, so Kamita won't grow, but abiyu will. I, I don't know yet. Okay. I uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, uh, Steve Kukura from um, Pine Island told me you're fine because he he said he had more damage on other things than the abiyus, and he. When he visited after the freeze two years ago, he's like, go for it. We'll okay, see. Very cool. I think the big thing is, is the fruit going to hang over the winter is going to be the determining thing, which I don't really know about. What are those red things over there? Is that fruit trees? Those are African eggplants. Oh, very cool. Yeah, different species of eggplant. Uh, I've got a, a friend here in from Zambia um, for the week, and he's real excited about that we have those. A cassava is another thing we focus on a lot. I have a lot of very improved, good tasting types of cassava. It's one of our main things we sell is the cuttings. Like this one is yellow fleshed uh, roots. Delicious, like a Irish potato. Uh, there's several black sapotes in here. Wow. Uh, I want to put in a plug for this guava. 
between me and my neighbor, I think we planted seven different guava clones. And this um, Peruvian white has been our most vigorous and very productive. And, and they're, they're pretty get, good. Worms get in there? We do. I got that one from Julian Lara that's supposed to be resistant. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't put it out yet. Uh, that's a Kwai Muk. Oh, wow. I got a Kwai Muk here. Okay. Has it fruited yet? Uh, it male blooms this year. So, so year. now, there, are those... Uh, those aren't self-pollinating, or are they? I think they are. Okay. Um, I'm hoping they are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my neighbor's got one too, so maybe, maybe I don't okay know how far way. the pollen can go, but. Okay, quite well. Very nice. Yeah. Yep. Those are pretty well adapted here. It seems quite cold tolerant. Mm -hmm. It didn't shrug at winter. Um, it was interesting to see on the ice cream beans. I had three or four species. And the one just hated that cold, and the other ones were fine, so I ripped that out. And I put abu, which will probably also hate the cold. Okay. But uh, the best way to find out is to experiment. Yeah, this is noni, which is a uh, disgusting okay. fruit. It smells but, great. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is a leafy green in a lot of the world. So oh, really, I, you can eat the greens. Right. Yep. Okay. I'm experimenting with it as a leafy. You need green. to cook them or raw. You know, I think it's cooked, a cooked green, but mine's not big enough for, I haven't looked into it that closely okay. yet. Black sapote. Again, this is like a jungle planting. Um, a lot of the bananas and other things will be phased out as the, you know, the woody fruit trees mature. So it's kind of an agroforestry type of scheme here where there's all kinds of things planted that are just to fill up the space sure. while we're waiting. Now, this is Rajapuri banana, which I'm also very impressed with because it only gets about this tall and it's just quick to fruit. It tastes a lot like a grocery store banana. This is a very good choice for zone nine. You could have a pup come up and get fruit before winter and it's cold tolerant plant. It tastes good. It's just a good, good central Florida banana. Now, is every property in this little, what's the city you're called? Babson Park. Babson Park. Is every property uh, good like this one for growing in this area? Mm, not the entire place, but a lot of it. Okay. So this is more seed grow out and vegetables. Like, now, uh, is, okay, if somebody's watching and they decide they want to get land, can they consult with you to find a good property? Is, or you be able I, to... I probably wouldn't have any ready... ready uh, places to suggest well but, if they found um, something and said is would this be a good growing property would you be yeah. able to say yes or no i could yeah i'm not great at email but people can the best way to talk to me is come for a tour every other saturday i get a lot of inquiries and emails and i just don't even check okay. the email because of that but right. um if you come out here i, I talk to anybody so all right so there's tomatoes these are right. sweet habaneros wow yeah this is like this is like a bell pepper. So it's not Tr hot. You can trust me, but it is okay. a habanero botanical. This is on year Oh, it's hot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> These are on year two, so it's like a perennial pepper. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, these are tropical lima beans. Thousands of bean pods in there. Sweet no, they don't grow through the summer? These ones, they do, but their production is in the dry season, like winter to now My friend was just in here weeding these are uh our best selection of sweet potato i did a trial of about 40 types of sweet potato and selected a very good productive variety how's your uh do you compost here i uh i i bring in compost mushroom compost you bring a mushroom compost bring it in by the from? semi What's that? Where do you get that from? Some company up by Orlando. Okay. Yeah. But for your own personal use, do you have a compost system or not? I throw, when I had chickens, it all went to the chickens, but the coyotes ate the chickens. But uh, I throw it all to the bananas. Okay. I just chuck it in there. Wow, look at that beautiful. Wow, that's just gorgeous. Yeah, it's a very unique vantage point for Florida. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. So what is that? You got the lake and what's behind it? there Cody Cove and behind it is the main lake wow so we're moving into kind of our grove down here okay 
we've already saw a lot of uh, fruit trees and we haven't even went to the grove yet. <laughs> Up there is kind of home garden model, a lot of mixed plantings in here. I kind of have an avocado block that's um, developing and then my main planting on there is mangoes. This looks like Israel. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. It does, it's amazing, wow. We've got mountains and lakes. This uh, <laughs> desert looking sand probably looks like some parts of Israel too. This is yeah. very, very challenging to grow in. I thought fruit trees like sand, but that's the white sand that they like, right? Well, it's easy to modify. It's acidic and it's deep, so it's great for tropical fruit, but it is a very a battle to keep the moisture and fertility there. So it's a probably a lot of growers in South Florida would give anything to be on this soil. You're up out of the acidic is huge. You see all these deficiencies in Miami because it's alkaline. We're acidic, we're deep, it drains well, so it is good, but it's also it's also challenging. So avocados, I've been having problems with the young trees getting burned up by the sun. So now I'm making cages around them when they're little with palm leaves. And uh, all kinds of things intercrop that, you know, are for, this is cassava that we grow for cuttings, for shipping. Lemongrass, we ship the live division. We have a row of jujubes. Oh, wow. Which, which jujubes are they? Do you know? Um, you know, they're the grafted. Thai? So Thomas. I have four. The labels said Taiwan and Thai. So I don't know if they're different. We'll, we'll just see. And now we're into mangoes. So mangoes is the fruit I have the most of. Your videos were actually very helpful in me. Um, I spent about a year just researching. And those videos were really helpful for helping me make variety choices. That's so, why I do the man. Because I want to just educate yeah. people. And myself. Yeah. So we've got a row of Pickering, and then in there there's Sessy Love and Rosy Gold. Dwarf Hawaiian. Now how close did you plant those in that row there? The Pickerings are real close because it's a dwarf. Sure. Uh, I think they're at 12, 12 feet. Everything else is roughly 20 by 25. Excellent, excellent. Good choice. Okay. Dwarf Hawaiian, Glen, Lemon Meringue. Now where would you get most of your uh, mangoes from? Or different places? The, graft the Pickerings I grafted. Um, I just picked them up here and there. How often do you water these? Um, depends. I'm watering them a lot because they're so young and I have other things mixed in and they're all in one zone. Uh, sometimes I'm getting them some water every day just because I, I want them to get established quick. But, uh, yeah. Do you spray the uh, leaves at all? No. No, okay. Feel the air movement? Yeah. It's like this all the time. So it really is good for mango, keeping everything clean. How many mango trees would you say you have? I think around 40. Wow. And in between, there's mulberries. I collect mulberry varieties. So I have all, um, those are just for cuttings. And then once they touch the mangoes, just chainsaw, they come out. Air layers, cuttings. I have other things in here that are filling up the space in the meantime and buffering the harshness of the environment, like the pigeon peas. And then once the mangoes start to mature, it'll just become a mango grove. Are you able to grow nuts out here? The nut, nuts? Nuts, like, sorry. Um, probably could do pecans, and I am planting macadamias, too. Okay, pecans. so this is your mango trees here, mango and then right on the other side here, you got some figs growing. Yeah, so these are grafted to that rootstock I mentioned. These are actually like a, just a year out of the graft. But you don't see figs growing with this type of vigor in Florida, typically because their root system's getting destroyed by nematodes. Same problem with guavas, but uh, these these are doing really well. What varieties? Different ones or? This is a Portuguese one um, that was recommended. Came from a friend. This is Celeste, and Celeste is considered to be one of the best varieties for Florida. I've been kind of surprised how much big rust it gets, but I have lots of varieties. I have a lot of the LSU ones, and I'm going to continue grafting and evaluating. We need to find the best variety and get it on the rootstock. So once we do that, we can all grow figs. But How's your peach tree selection out here? I don't have any yet. Okay. Uh, kind of hard for me to get excited about it when I have Glen Mango right here. And uh, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're kind of marginal here. They've tried doing uh, like peach groves and they're, I guess they don't even make money out of them. So but you can grow them. 
uh, this row of mango is all Southeast Asian. So nice. Uh, Nam Dak Mai, Siatong, and then I have several of those ones you eat green and crunchy. Yeah. I'm um, putting guava mango in this row. Guava. Delicious. Um, not Philippine, but I'm about to rip it out. It's not healthy. These are all Indian. So which Indian ones do you have? Cherry, Malika, ice cream, Super Alfonso, which I guess people say doesn't even taste like Alfonso. So. No, and ice cream's actually from uh, Trinidad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. From what I understand, it's like an Indian class mango, I should say. It has a flavor. Right. Well, it's Indian people that. You got it, you got it. I see. I see. I see. Um, That's amazing. Wow. I can't so, how no often you said you're watering these? Um, when it's real dry, they might be getting some water every day. Once the rains really start, they may not get anything for months. So it is dip. You know, most of Florida, you could probably plant a mango and never water it. We are on like this desert hill here. I mean, if you look at this, even if you're a cactus or a mango tree, it, this is tough to survive in. So, so, so for the Mahanta Shinoka that's fruiting, has any other mangoes fruited here yet? Um, I picked off all the blooms and fruits off. Good, these. good, okay. Uh, the the Maha's an, a year older than. But we these. saw when we drove in here, your neighbors have really tall ones, and and variously around town is some big oh, mango trees. Oh, oh yeah, they're heavily fruitful. Amazing, yeah. absolutely amazing. Because you wouldn't think for an area like this that you'd see this. But wow. Yeah. Uh, these are all dill hybrids. Okay. Sweet tart, sugar loaf, co coconut cream, all those. What's your favorite mango? Um, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I really like lemon meringue. You know, it's been, get, I don't know why it gets a lot of hate. I feel like pickering to me is just consistently delicious. And people, Alvarez says it's overrated. I don't know. I think it depends on what somebody's goal is because pickering does great for small yards. It's productive, mm -hmm. consistent. But when you compare it against a lemon meringue, that's, that's what, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Some days I'd rather eat a pickering than a lemon meringue. Everyone, know. taste is so subjective. That's one yeah. thing that I found out. Yeah. And and you know what? Not only for each person, but each yeah. season. Yeah. Because one season you might love like a carry, and the next season yeah. you'd be like, you don't want anything to do with them. It's really interesting. Yeah. Maybe it's not a, uh, a flashy choice, but I, I like it a lot. So what do we got here? What's this row? Uh, these are all lates. Kit, Kent, Lil Jem. Um, Venus? Not yet, but I want to get okay. that. Honey Kiss, I want to get M4, I want to get um, cotton candy. I have, and then the last row. These are wild species: um, Kasturi, grafted Kasturi. Uh, two selections of grafted Lawijiwa, and then Juno, which is a hybrid of Mangifera rubrapetala and Cambodiana. So. Wow! Well, how far does your land go? All the way to the water. Wow, man! So I got more more room to go. Amazing. We've got a bamboo windbreak on the north there of a Thai type of bamboo that's got a very uh, tight footprint. Absolutely right. amazing what you're doing here. That's great. Yeah, so you can see how inhospitable this is. There's no weeds growing here. But with inputs, with, with compost, mulch, we even bring in some red clay, local red clay, when we plant. And, you know, the mangoes are really happy. Avocados are not liking this as much. It's funny because one part of the farm, it's like rainforest, and then you come here and it's desert. So, but mango is a really good choice for this type of terrible soil. Yeah, that is amazing. And you do have jabos growing here too, jabo cabo. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, wow. Yeah. Most stuff I've got at least one in the works. I'm trying to have at least kind of one of anything. You could so, have. what's your ultimate goal here? Is it just? Yeah. You tell us what is that. The goal is to uh, a make a living through selling plants, fruits, seeds, um, but also you know educate the community about what can be grown, push the limits on on identifying new good you know edible plants people can grow at home. My original reason I got into all this was a global poverty focus, so I still am very oriented towards that type of outlook. Um, but now with a more local lens, like what can we do to increase our local food production, what can people grow in their own yards. Uh, you know, there's so many things out there from around the world that we're just not utilizing properly. So all that combined.
besides the growing, do you do anything like rainwater collecting or or uh, reusable um, electricity here or anything like that? Or or what? Recycle electricity, like no, anything like that. Um, I would love to do all kinds of things like that, but I'm very, very, very tied down with what I'm already doing. So well, that is just wonderful, everything you got here. And I know you said you had some chickens. You don't have them now, but any other pets do you have? I have two dogs. Two dogs. And how do they help around the garden? They're they're pretty lazy. Okay. Yeah, okay. They, they don't do much. All right. Well, this is great. Besides your neighbor that you know, do you know everyone else in the neighborhood? Yeah. Yeah, pretty well. Everyone here is nice. And there's actually, this is turning into a little agrid neighborhood. We have one, two, three, four, just in this cove that are planting their whole yard. And then I have two older neighbors that have mangoes going back to the 70s or whatever, you know, so uh, it's pretty neat. We have elders that have been growing here for a long time uh, and a growing community of people that are seeing the value of these little warm microclimates and planting stuff. So it's a neat place. So cool. So cool. All right, everybody, I'm going to put uh, Josh's website in a link below in the description so you can check it out and you can contact him there if you want to get in touch with him and check out this place he does tours every saturday every other saturday every other saturday and they're on the website on the website but if you're in town and it's not a saturday give him a call and see if he can work we, something out we also do a uh, patreon subscription with online classes that are like really in-depth lectures on specific crops soils they're kind of verging on college level type lectures and stuff um so that's something else we do beautiful yep. look at this amazing place here all right thank you for having us come out this is wonderful thank you all right, yep. all right. All right, everybody, there it was. It is late here, but I had to get that out to you, and I pray that uh, this reaches many people. Remember, if you like this video and all these videos, subscribe. And if you have a property that you think I'd be interested in coming out and seeing, please let me know. My contact information is in the description below, and I consider coming out there and doing a video with you on the show and featuring you. But uh, Josh was wonderful. The place is amazing. He does tours there every other Saturday. So definitely uh, try to get out there because they're in Central Florida. So anywhere you want Florida, south, north, east, or west, they're right in the middle. And it's definitely worth the trip. And while you're there, you can go visit his neighbor and pick up some amazing mangoes. And if, they, if you're watching this years from now, eventually Josh will be selling his own fruit as well. So definitely keep these contacts in mind. And if you're looking for a great place to to move to a great environment, a great climate in South Florida or in Florida. It would be Central Florida, Cody Cove, that whole area over there. Check it out. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and have a great day and keep growing.